Okay, so I didn't know it was supposed to be made in English. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I just discovered it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yes. uh, just before we start, I would like to know how many developers do we have in the room? Okay, and do we have other people? Yes, what do you do? Okay, okay, and we don't have any product owners, or no? Okay. So on my side, I will talk about a train booking system. Yes. It's okay. And so before we start, I would like to know if you already booked a train using an online system. <laughs> yes. Did you ever use? A corporate travel agency? Okay, we'll talk about that. So, my name is. Uh, uh, okay, so it's working. Julien Topsu. I'm a technical coach at Shodo, which is a French consultancy company helping people to adopt uh, domain driven design uh, software craftsmanship. Uh, I have a blog which is named Beyond Scratch and also uh, on, on which I'm talking about domain driven design, security and some other stuff. I'm doing also some Twitch lives and some like that, uh, stuff like that. And I'm a member of the OWASP Foundation. This is the security foundation. And I created Craft Records who which helps people to become speaker uh, in, in technical events. And what is uh, what what we'll talk today is a train booking system as i said because i used to be uh, responsible for the the rail platform of a really famous worldwide uh, company uh, but i won't talk much about the name of that company <laughs> because uh, not sure uh, because uh, yes i am not sure it's really relevant here <laughs> and because i can speak freely <laughs> And uh, so the aim of that company was to provide services, online services, to help people to uh, book a lot of uh, stuff around travel, like, uh, like hotels, uh, cars, uh, trains. And maybe you already used that for your own company when you had to do corporate travel. And that, uh, that was the subsidiary dedicated for corporate travel, so maybe you were using our system. And you may know that, um, so let's start with a quiz, sorry. So here I have several train carriers, this is the name, and let's guess what is the country of each of those carriers. So SNCF. Okay, that's quite easy, Amtrak. Yes, but they even them don't know that they have a, a train system. <laughs> train Italia, quite, quite. Uh, okay, Renfe, Spain, National Rail, UK, SNCB, <laughs> SNCB, Belgium. <laughs> okay, so so each of those uh, train carriers has their own system. Have their own system. You can book directly on them, but they also offer uh, some APIs, so you can, so online uh, web agencies, uh, not web agencies, but uh, online travel agencies can consume that. But uh, since that company is a worldwide company, it offers to everyone in the world the capability of uh, book a, a rail, uh, 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 so, so sorry, to book a train. So, and you can imagine the nightmare here because each of those uh, companies has their own API, right? So if you want to do a single product which helps you to, to book SNCF tr rail uh, trains and Amtrak trains, it's a nightmare. So because it's really, it's, uh, it's really complicated, some, company, some companies made a business out of it and Companies like Amadeus, maybe you heard them. Trendline, I'm pretty sure you know them because 
they kill Captain Trey. <laughs> <laughs> if you used to use uh, Captain Trey, no, no one here. It was a, a, a French startup on which you can, you know, uh, book uh, trains, and they was bought by uh, Trainline. But Trainline is not only uh, an agency, uh, uh, a travel agency. There are something else, and we will talk about that. But those companies made uh, um, a business, and that business is to help um, travel agencies by providing a single API that uh, gather all the, all the possible carriers. So that's great, because you don't have to integrate e one API for each of the carriers you want to support, right? So usually, you are working with those guys uh, because they also um, do something which is uh, really complicated, which is the, the reservation itself. Bec there is a lot of concurrency to handle on that. So they also, they also uh, do that for us. And those companies are called a global distribution system. This is the name of those companies, GDS. So the aim of that company is to federate all the API of carriers, and they also offer that for uh, flight systems and stuff like that. OK. And typically, it was outside of our scope. But in that company, the, the company I'm not talking about, <laughs> uh, you have to know that each time you book an hotel room in the world, uh, uh, one, uh, I think it's one on two, one of, uh, un sur deux en anglais, j'ai du mal. One of two. One out of two booking is made on their system because they are a kind of global distribution system for hotels, but not for rails. So the aim of that company was to use uh, some, some comp uh, a GDS because uh, with that, you don't have to integrate each of those uh, carriers. Great. So the, a global distribution system is also offering an API. So that's why I'm using here the open host service. It's like, you know, uh, you all know what an open host service is. If you, do not, if you don't know it, think about an API. So on our, on our side, we had to integrate the global distribution system. So we had a big team, which was called the train supply. And the aim was to make sure that the, the rest of the company was able to, you know, call the APIs of the global distribution system. The reason, there were several reasons, because some of the global distribution system were stateful and we didn't want to deal with uh, statefulness. It can be a real nightmare. So we, they made uh, something in between that transformed everything into stateless. And furthermore, we had to integrate several global distribution systems. So that might seem odd because they were supposed to federate several carriers, but yeah, some people are laughing, so they might know <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> but the thing is that usually they don't integrate uh, everyone, right? So if you want to, to work with uh, Amtrak, in fact, you have to work with Silver Rail. If you want to, you, uh, to work with SNCF, you have to work with Amadeus. And perhaps Train 9 has also SNCF, but they don't have the regional train yet. So we were dealing with those nightmares. <laughs> so instead of uh, you know, uh, um, uh, using directly the carriers, we were using the global distribution system. And we had a lot of logic saying, in that case, it will be that GDS. And that was handled by the, by the train supply uh, context. There were also handling a lot of things that was really, really technical because those global distribution system uh, are asking a lot of, uh, are, let's say, like I said, sometimes they are stateful, you have to deal with that and make sure that the API that, that you expose is, uh, is not uh, stateful for the rest of the company. 
and some some of because you don't want to deal with that kind of stuff and sometimes because you know even if the, the even that well, the promise was to say okay i have a single fpi for each uh, for to for all the carriers but most of the time you know <laughs> it was really depending on the use case B because it was really quite difficult to 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 create something that that would fit for every train you have to know that it's not like the um, the air the um, the flight companies the the train is something which is domestic it re this is really specific to a country if you change the country the rules the way to 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 modelize a train is completely different and they have a lot of rules sometimes you you cannot imagine for example um, you have to know that in uk you can do a round trip by selecting only the outbound train seulement l'aller you can't do that in france but uh, in uk you can but uh, when you you discover that just uh, not uh, you know <laughs> when you have to go in production usually <laughs> so so unfortunately, uh, that was a real nightmare. Uh, that nightmare was handled by the train supply team. So it helped us to know in that use case, because you here you want to sell a French train that will use that GDS. And if you, are you want to use the regional train, you will use that system instead. So, okay, quite complicated. And because uh, sometimes uh, you know that um, it was also also a link to the way they they were uh, licensing their APIs as well. So sometimes uh, the the choice was made j uh, not only on um, because on the the functionalities or the contents they were delivering, but on the price depending on the use case. And that was, I think, one of the biggest system we had uh, for the train to unlink that. Okay, so here we just integrated, in fact, uh, the global distribution system, but for now we, we never help the customer to, to choose a train, right? So that's why here we have that big shopping context. So the aim of the shopping context was to provide a way to the customer to choose a train to display all the possible train, to choose a train and so on. And because the company was not uh, uh, handling the inventory of trains, we had to look for those trains from the GDS, so not directly, but through the train supply system. Is that clear enough? Okay. There is a reason why that shopping part is big in the schema because we will dig into uh, that part because I was more uh, responsible of that part and there are some interesting stuff uh, because here uh, I, uh, I will show you how it, evol it evolves in the time. Okay, so so we so to make sure that we will able to retrieve the train from the train supply system we have that link so we were uh, talking about uh, to we were retrieving the train from the api of the train supply but we had to make some to make sure that the model from the train supply will never contaminate uh, uh, let's say pollute the one from the shopping system for several reasons the first reason was that when they <laughs> they made that API, they just aligned on the, the first GDS. They were integrated. <laughs> they integrated, and unfortunately, it was the one that was uh, where the let's say the the real domain is the poorest one, basically the US. <laughs> so there, so that's not. Um, you have to know that in the US people doesn't use train because for the same uh, if you want to do uh, in the west coast something uh, like a 2 hours trip in uh, with car with a car 
the same trip with the train was something like seven hours. And they cannot say that uh, regarding the ecology, that's better because everything is uh, using fuel uh, in the US, even the trains. So nobody was uh, are using trains in, uh <laughs> in the US. So it also means that uh, the offering is quite poor and things you can do with trains in the US is was poor as well. Uh, for example, I'm not sure it was them, but the concept of round trip was not a real round trip. You are doing two uh, one way just to, to build a one trip with the API, something like that. This is something you don't want to, you know, to be polluted with because you want the concept of uh, round trip to be something strong in your domain because it exists and people know what it means, right? So that's why we had to make sure that the, the everything that would be related to the business logic of choosing a train, displaying a train and so on, won't be uh, aligned with the, the, the supply team. And because it was also too technical sometimes, and because sometimes they didn't know exactly uh, how was the business in America, for example, in the, in the API they retrieved from the GDS, they had sometimes, let's say, condition uh, general de vente en anglais, CGU, okay, but not, uh, and, uh, but they didn't know it was uh, applying to the world trip or only the the first segment because you can do, uh, comment on dit déjà des connections, right? Thank you. You can do connections, so they put that everywhere, and they duplicated all the stuff. And on our side, we were okay. We were cleaning the API, in fact. So that's why an anti-corruption layer was really important on that part. But we were not only working with uh, the train supply system because when a user was connected to the system, it's not like uh, a free, um, let's say, uh, a public system because we know all the consumer, the all the customers, all the users, because they have a contract with us. We are a, con a corporate travel agency, so it means, for example, at Agicap, uh, if you are working with that kind of uh, uh, corporate travel agency, usually you have an account on on the agency. So that's why we know everyone from the company. So each time someone was requesting for a train, we can know uh, how old he was to make sure that uh, the fares, tariff en français, uh, that we will uh, give him back, uh, that we will give to him will be okay regarding the, regarding his age. So that's why we were integrating with the user system, but the user system has a lot of uh, information that was not de dedicated for the train. For example, you can have your loyalty card for uh, for the flight for the flights for Air France. We don't really care about that when you are a train system. So this is also why we had here an anti-corruption layer. We were also requesting the policy domain. Policy is, uh, is this is travel policy. So for example, if your employer don't want you to travel with the first class uh, on the train. So that was basically here that that's that the policies was made, uh, so were made. So we had to each time verify that uh, if you want to do that trip, your company allows you to do that trip, or just flag it. Okay, here you are out of policy, and all the policies were centralized uh, and was not dedicated only for the trains, because as I said, we were also. Uh, you had uh, also the hotel booking system, the car booking system, and stuff like that. And the fees, uh, because depending on the contract you have with the corporate travel av uh, agency, the fees are not exactly computed the same way. Okay. So here I have represented also something that I named user canal. So it doesn't really mean something. It was just to, you have to know that uh, we had four 
teams dedicated just to to construct the um, the desktop application. No, no, that was not a desktop application. Sorry, the web app, the the mobile application on iOS, iOS iPad, uh, Android, and so on. And they were on different time zones, so it doesn't help much. And the thing is that when they, they, they started their work, for example, the mobile team, they were not dedicated for the train. On the mobile, app, uh, on the mobile application, you can reserve everything you want. Uh, it, can be, uh, uh, it can be a car or something like that. And because we were the last uh, uh, product they integrated, they tried to impose us their API. Say, so, okay, we are doing this, uh, because people were thinking that trains and flight was the same thing, but actually it doesn't. It doesn't because, like I said, uh, flight is something which is, uh, in the industry, standardized. This is not the same thing with train. Uh, and the thing is that things that you can do with train, you can't do with, uh, with flight, right? And unfortunately, people made that also in the code, so they inherited sometimes the flight, uh, <laughs> the flight class for the to, to define a train. Uh, uh, yes. Yes, that's quite complicated uh, to, to maintain after that. But you know, because you have four fields that are the same, arrival, departure, okay, that's quite, <laughs> that's better to make that inheritance. And so they were trying to impose their own uh, API to us, saying, okay, it's basically 10 things are in the flight system, so let's do that. But no, we can't do that. So that's not possible because a lot of um, business rules, so we explained that to them. And first we were trying to work with them like in the partnership um, pattern, saying, okay, we will construct everything together. And because they were challenging on uh, the data type itself of a duration, for example, they want the duration to be just an integer. So, okay, but I don't know what an integer mean. You know, it can be seconds, it can be minutes, it can be days, right? But on their side, okay, it's implicit that's uh, that's uh, that's uh, minutes or something like that. Okay, but why? <laughs> and furthermore, w that was not the only consumer, so that's why we said, okay, we are changing everything. So now this is the API, <laughs> and you will consume it because that's not your work to know. Uh, to know the, the, let's say, the business of the train, right? Your work is to build an, uh, a mobile application. You, ne you just need to know what's the basics of a, mobile t uh, of, uh, a train booking system. But to, to explain you why in that case, that fare cannot be selected, you don't want to know that, right? So we changed the, um, the way we were working with them and we said, okay, now that's conformist for you. This is the API. So we gave them the API, mocks, and uh, we also delivered to them our, um, our uh, functional tests and so on that was uh, using our APIs to just to show them what was the workflow and furthermore we were using uh, so we were, uh, uh, let's say, ah. embedding the workflow in the API itself. This is a technique I, I talked already with uh, ESATOS, and I made a conference uh, of that. So with that, they didn't need to go too deep inside the, um, what means uh, to, to book a train. So we said to them, okay, next step, you do that. Next step, you do that. You don't think about uh, the business logic that say, you are in the case where you can select an inbound train. Okay, so that's why they were conformist. They have to conform with that. Okay, so before I go further, it's okay for everyone? Yes? So, uh, five minutes? Okay, so. I have something really complicated regarding the, 
the, <laughs> the checkout part with a two conformist uh, relationship that existed, but it's quite complicated to, <laughs> to explain. But if you want to talk about that, we can do that after the, the presentation. But what I would like to show you, because I think it will be uh, something which is more helpful, is what was the content of the shopping part. So like I said, you can display the, li the you you can uh, with the shopping part. The aim was to display all the possible train and help the people help the people to choose one of the train. In the MVP, the only thing they can do is to say is was to say okay, you can select an outbound and inbound train. That's all. After the MVP, we help them to to choose ancillar ancillaries and to choose some options like, okay, I want to be seated near the window or near the aisle. That was not on the MVP. You can book your, your sandwich, you can book everything you want, the, the Wi-Fi and so on. And it, it, it appears that by doing the, an event storming, that it was the most complicated part of the domain, in fact. It was so complicated that we have chosen to, to split the domain in two parts, the search part and the what the architect called the product part, <laughs> which was dedicated to the customization. So to say, okay, here I want to be seated, seated here, I want the Wi-Fi and so on. Uh, I think on the SNCF you have uh, 80 options for just for seats, it's a nightmare. If you want a carré, a solo, uh, family uh, wagon, machin, oh, that was really complicated. And furthermore, you have to each time you we were integrating that kind of concept, you have we, we had to see on the other uh, carrier if they did the same thing. And unfortunately, sometimes the middle seat is the middle seat. Sometimes this is the centered seat, and that was a real nightmare. So we have to do that kind of reconciliation sometimes, and 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 some trains has real beds as well on the, in Italy. So how do you modelize that when it was not supposed to do, uh, to have more than uh, two uh, classes because they have something like seven classes in Italy. It's, uh, it's uh, yes, there's a lot of stuff to do. So that was really complicated. So we made a, uh, a domain, a special domain to handle that all the possible ancillaries you had. And because, and here that what was uh, really interesting because it was in the same application, so we made a modular uh, monolith in a way, is that there is a lot of uh, concept that was, that was existing in both cases. But they, they were existing in both cases with several uh, important stuff. The first one, it was ex uh, all those concepts had exactly the same meaning in both cases. The same meaning, the same representation, the same invariance, and the same business logic. And basically, they were uh, value objects. So we have chosen to put that in a shared kernel. Okay? So it was, uh, it was used by both the search and the product. It, it was something like prices, um, fees, policies, that was exactly the same thing. And each time we needed to add a behavior on those view, and that behavior was used only in one of those uh, concepts, we, we were taking it out from the shared kernel. Because each time you add a behavior, it means that the concept evolves. If this is not exactly the same thing, this is no longer the same thing, even if it is called the same way. That's really important. Otherwise, this is uh, a smell. So that's quite hard to, to, to build a shared kernel. Here, what was quite easy is that it was exactly the same team handling everything, but usually avoid a shared kernel if you're not sure you need that. And, you're not and you cannot ensure that the rules I just uh, uh, talked about you cannot make sure that you will be uh, com we, we, we you will comply with. I think I'm running out of time, but 
I think that part was quite uh, interesting if you are in the if you are a developer. So that's all for me. And uh, so if you have any question, thank you. Thank you.